All right, today we're going to be taking a look at another new laser we got you in the shop. And see if I can get it all in frame here. This is literally it. It is the Sculptfun iCube desktop laser engraver. Now, this will be the smallest laser engraver I'll have in the shop. Like, it's all in this box, and obviously that's including all the packaging and everything. So this is designed for more like um smaller projects if you're doing like business cards and like slate and stuff like that. From what I've seen online, this laser does really well with it. I don't know if there's gonna be like much building or anything to do with it. I think it literally is just it comes in the box as one. And unlike other lasers I've had where I've had to like build the frame and everything myself, this one, as far as I know, it's all in one. So let's get down then we'll open the box and we'll see what we got. So let's have a look what we've actually got then. So we got the box with the actual machine in it, and they've sent me this separate box with the instructions and I'm guessing it is the control panel which I think might be touchscreen which would be pretty cool. I do not have a touchscreen laser at all. Right. Some test materials so we've got Probably balsa wood and a bit of MDF. And instructions. That will come out. There's more packaging. Oh, there's a bit of building involved. Power cable. The diode module. Oh, and more glasses. So some air filters. So what I have seen online is this has got, I don't know if you can see it in there, its own extraction fan like built into it. So obviously when you're using it, it's going to suck it through. And these filters are obviously going to try and filter as much of the the crap out, basically. So, so far, I'm very impressed because they've sent you a lot of extras to go with it. So obviously there's filters already in there, I can see. And they've sent me some extra filters. This little metal bit comes out. I'm going to assume I will check in the instructions. But I think that is um, like a level. So when you set your piece in there, you set that to the height. And that is... That's the right distance. So nice, simple design. We've got the extraction fan on the back. So they said it's a built-in extraction, so it's going to suck all the smoke through, but then it's going to filter as much as it can through the... It's the double carbon filter system, I believe, there. And it's going to try and suck as much of the debris through and obviously filter it as much as possible. Inside, we've got the laser head itself. Got your limit switch here because obviously it's only going to work in a small area. Uh, we've got the power switch on and off, the plug input, and the USB C, which I'm guessing is for the touch screen. Is it? We'll have a look now. Oh, this is just like standalone. That's pretty cool. So you've got the power in, USB, USB C, and you can put a micro SD card in there as well. Right, so that's plugged in the top there. So this cable has. So the cable goes from the touchscreen monitor and then directly into the side of the machine. But then it's got another input here. So the power supply will go in there and then you can turn it on and off using this button. Okay, so everything's plugged in. I've got the power supply coming in here. Um, I've got the connection from the touchscreen going directly from there into the machine. So this should turn on that. Here we go. I wasn't sure if it was going to work with them. And then we've got the USB cable running from the top of this touchscreen also into the side of the machine here. So when I turn the machine on, they're connected instantly then. Let's move it 10 mil. Oh, we can move it fast. Here we go. And then home. All right, guys. So after trying and testing the Sculptfun iCube 10 Watt, I can quite comfortably say it is a very good machine. And it is absolutely perfect for people who are doing small things like coasters or business cards and things like that. The engraving size, it says on the bed in this, is 120 by 120 millimeters. The spot size itself, so the actual spot of the beam, is 0 0.08 millimeters. 
So the machine itself, it does support Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Now it does also mention on the website about the cutting ability. Yet it will cut, but for something like this, you're not really going to want it for cutting because it's such a small bed size. You're going to want it more for engraving. So with this machine, not only can you connect it to your computer to say something like Lightboom, like you can with a normal laser, you can also get this additional touchscreen to go with it as well, which you can actually connect via Wi-Fi. So you can connect that to the machine and then you can connect your phone with the Sculpt app to that and then you can send your designs directly to it. But I actually wasn't a massive fan of the app. It is very limited in what you can actually do. Don't get me wrong, if you are looking just to engrave small projects, then the app will work absolutely fine for it. But connecting it to a PC or a laptop does give you a lot more control, especially when using Lightburn with it. Now the app itself, it's very simple and easy to go through. You literally turn your machine on and you connect to it via the Wi-Fi, and then using that IP code there, you just connect to the actual machine. And you'll see on the home screen, you can control it. You've got the folder you can access. You go to the website, but you've also got creation. With the creation tab, this is where you can, obviously you can take photos. You can, you can load preset vectors. You can have images saved to your phone. So in album, you can import your own photos. Well, I imported a default image there. You press next, and then you've got all your settings. Now, gray, black, and white, I don't really understand like what really the difference is. The only thing I can see is the gray, but it's a gray background. But when you're engraving vectors, we don't want that. So I don't see why that's there. So you've got the black and white sketch, which is just the outline, and then dither, which again, you're not really going to use that for a vector. That'll be more for photos. You can adjust the brightness of it. So it doesn't really do anything because it's just a black and white image. You can just turn it to a bit gray. And then the contrast, which again, it's not really going to do much for the black image. So this is where you can set the size you want the project to be the speeds and powers on how many passes you want it to run. And then once you're happy with all that, you can just press box selection. Um, if I was connected to the machine, it would just literally just frame where it goes. So you can see where the laser's framing. Then you press upload, it'll send it to the machine and it'll just start going. Now, when using the app, when you've actually sent the job to the printer, you can adjust the speeds and powers whilst it's going. I found this so bad though, because I, I physically couldn't set the exact number I wanted in either of them. And if I change one, I couldn't change another without changing that back. It was very confusing. I wasn't really sure what was happening. I don't even know if it was adjusting the speed on it. The only time I'd notice is if it like glitch out to 200%. When I'd adjust the power, then it'd go down to like 5%. It was very strange. I wasn't sure what was going on, but that is why I'm not a massive fan of the app. Because you haven't got loads of control with it, and where you are controlling it doesn't really work. And that's why all the tests I'd done with this was actually done in Lightburn where I connected the machine physically to the computer. But once it was connected to Lightburn, it was very easy to use, just like any laser. Very simple, plug it in, set the actual laser settings up. So I couldn't find a file to import, I had to create it myself. But again, that was very easy to do. You just select the type of motherboard that's in there, the bed size, and it's as easy as that. Let's go through a couple of pros and cons I found with the laser. So obviously a big pro, it's, it's tiny, it's very portable and it's very light. So you can literally take this to shows with you and you can do stuff there and then without any problem whatsoever. Another pro feature is how easy it is to actually use. You can take the protection sheet away, just slide it out, put your piece in and then close it back up. If you wanted to run the laser without the protective sheet in there, just make sure you are wearing glasses. What I did really like as well is the little tool that comes out with the actual laser module itself. So you can set the optimal focal length. It's it's literally so quick and easy. With most of the lasers, they give you like a small piece of like acrylic or something to do it with. And if you're anything like me, you are forever losing them and having to make new ones. With this, it's built into the module itself. You literally fold it down. You can loosen the head, go up or down, set it, and then tighten it back and it's, it's done. It takes a couple of seconds. It's so simple to do and using different materials, it literally doesn't take you any time whatsoever. So even though this is a really small machine, another feature of it, it is that you're not just restricted to that small area on the bed. You can actually remove the bed, just pull it out, and then you can put this laser on top of your material, set the height, and then you can just go from there as well. Now let's cover a couple of cons with the machine. There's not many of them, but one of them being there's no light inside the actual laser itself. So I've always had to shine an actual light inside whenever I'm doing anything with it. Because it's all black, and especially if you're doing slate, you can't really see exactly what you're doing. Or if I wanted to look in and see if the engraving's done right without trying to move it, you can't because there's no light in there, so you physically got to put a light in there yourself. And another con I found was the actual safety acrylic sheet that goes on the front and sides of it. Mine didn't really fit that snug, so I found the actual light from the beam was leaking out from the from the bits where it wasn't that snug. So 
you'd have to make sure you're both using that and the glasses at the same time just to be extra safe because again if that does reflect into your eyes if you're doing something metallic it's not going to end well for you well let's have a look quickly at some items i have done with this machine now then so we'll have a look at the slate first so i've done two different slate coasters both exactly the same image this one was done in Lightburn using the Stucky, or Stucky, I would pronounce it, settings. And this, same again, but this was used doing Dither. And I'm not sure how well you can pick that up, but it's very high detail. You can see like all the feathers and everything with it. This one was probably my favorite one, but you can see the detail you've actually got from this is very good for what it is. Let's have a look. Again, it's the same image on a business card. So this is my first time engraving an image on a business card. And I must say that has come out really, really nice. Again, you can see all the details in there. Then the Mark AM was just a solid vector. And it flew through that. It must have done that in about 30 seconds. And then I did this on black acrylic. So I know it looks like there's nothing there at the moment. But I put this on like the lowest power. I put like 5% accidentally. But if you have a look at this in the right light, it looks as if there's a 3D image put onto the acrylic. I don't know how well the camera is going to pick this up, but to, to my eye, it looks 3D. But yeah, looking at one angle, it literally looks like there's nothing there. But yeah, I was really happy how this turned out because it's literally an invisible image and you can't see it until you put it in the right light. And that, like I said, it was literally done on the lowest power. It doesn't really feel like it's been engraved either. Lastly, one of my tests I did was on a bigger piece of some cork. I've never done cork before. I've had these around the shop for ages. And I just put a Merry Christmas logo on there I found on Google. But yeah, I like how that's come out. That's come out really well. It's a very low power, very high speed. So yeah, these were just the tests i done for now with it. Because this is really what you're going to be doing with this type of machine. Slate coasters, um, business cards. You could even do, obviously, a uh, cork. It's not a, is it a coaster? I'm not sure what they are, to be honest with you. Um, I think it's like a placemat or something. So yeah, there we go, guys. I do hope you enjoyed my quick review of the Sculpt One IQ 10 Watt Laser. This was a very different experience from having to get the laser out of the box, build everything from scratch, and then obviously put it together, make sure it all works and works right. This machine literally came out of the box ready to go. So I will put a link down in the description if you want to check out the Sculpt One website and see what other ranges of lasers they got there as well. This one at the moment on the Sculpt One website is actually on sale. You can get it at less than 300 euros. And at the moment, they got up to 60% off on the Black Friday sale, guys. So definitely check them out and you can get yourself a huge saving on these as well. Anyway, I'm going to have more of a play around with this laser and see what else I can get done with it. And yeah, guys, don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you're not already. And we will see you in the next video, guys. Ta-da now.